Right, give us an update on where Magic Leap is because uh, you've been at this for eight years. The technology has been super secretive and so many people want to better understand what you're actually doing. Great, thanks for having me, Emily. Uh, you know, we've been, we, we have been uh, innovating in the spatial computing space uh, for, the eight year, for eight years. Uh, we're actually building a technology that is uh, for all day, every day, and everyone, which includes both enterprise and consumers. Uh, now we know the inflection point for enterprises is coming earlier. IDC identifies uh, the XR space, which is kind of inclusive of AR and VR, as a $128 billion market opportunity in 2023. Enterprise taking off first, and then the consumer following with an inflection point kind of out in the 2023 time frame. And it's really aligned well when, when we see uh, the 5G deployments becoming broader uh, and driving adoption across the consumer space. Now we're seeing early consumers adopt even today, uh, but the inflection point for mass consumer adoption starts to happen in the 2023 timeframe. What we've got now is, is the enterprise customers really starting to drive adoption across many different use cases. We've got hundreds of enterprises that are uh, uh, using Magic Leap today for pilots and proof of concepts and early deployments across training use cases, uh, across communication and collaboration, which is uh, incredibly important right now as people uh, need to collaborate and communicate across time and space because they can't get on planes uh, and go to meetings or go to conferences, as an example. Now, I'll never forget Magic Leap's first demo and the early concept videos of checking email in the air and the holding the elephant in your hand. We haven't seen that yet. How transformative is Magic Leap's technology, you know, which was supposed to be magic mixed with reality, how transformative is it really going to be? Honestly, it's truly transformative. And actually, both the examples you use today, you can do today. You can hold the elephant in your hand. Actually, I mean, on my team alone, I've got multiple employees kind of living in Magic Leap all day. I've got, uh, I've got a couple of folks who've gotten rid of all the monitors on their desk. And they come in in the morning, they put on Magic Leap, and they're working. They've got five or six monitors up. They've got video playing in the background. They've got a conference call or a video conference going with their, uh, with their colleagues around the world. Uh, so these use cases are what we are deploying today. They're actually live today, not just internally, but also with customers. We've got a customer uh, in Paris, uh, BNP Paribas, which is a, a large real estate uh, uh, and, and banking uh, customer of ours. And they're using Magic Leap and a software called Spatial uh, to connect their employees around the world. Um, and they're also using it with customers to give tours of projects coming out of the ground. And their initial uh, intent was really to become more green and reduce the carbon footprint, not getting on planes. Uh, but given the, the backdrop of what's going on today in the world, uh, it's actually helping people collaborate uh, around the world. But Omar, you're talking about coronavirus obviously being a boon to the business because you have a lot of people who can't go into work so they can use it at home. But the consumer market isn't really developed yet. How do you get the product to the consumer, because that surely is a much, much deeper market than the enterprise piece. Yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, starting in uh, the 2023 timeframe, along with our carrier customers, we're starting to see that inflection point happen. We've got Magic Leap One today uh, that we've got enterprise customers adopting uh, and doing proof of concepts and pilots, and they're excited actually about our next generation product, Magic Leap Two, uh, which is coming out next year, which is a significant uh, step forward for the industry and for Magic Leap. Uh, it'll be a half the size of Magic Leap One, and it'll be double the field of view uh, of Magic Leap One. And it really removes the compromises that you have to make to, in today's uh, XR platforms from an experience perspective. And we've got Magic Leap Three right behind it from a roadmap perspective uh, coming out. And we believe those products get us towards that, uh, that vision that we're uh, driving, which is all day, everyone, everywhere. We're not building a helmet that you have to wear for 20 minutes at a time for a use case. And we're not building a flimsy set of like, uh, you know, lenses that, uh, that don't deliver the value of true spatial computing. And some of your competitors, I mean, obviously Microsoft are, are building out their own product. Uh, Apple, I think, are in the space now. Facebook have said they want to do about five billion a year in the space. Isn't it time as a company like Magic Leap has grown very fast to maybe look at getting some, some funding through the IPO market or potentially taking on new investment? Look, I, I can't speak to those conversations, uh, but what I can tell you is in those eight years as we've been building out that roadmap, we've built a very significant, broad, foundational IP portfolio uh, that's really put a moat around our uh, leadership in the XR space. 
And, and it makes it much more difficult for competitors to enter the market, much more costly, and, and takes a lot longer time for, the, for them to get there. Uh, what we've got is that we've got our second generation product, which actually continues to expand our leadership coming out next year, and then our next product right behind it in the roadmap. And that gives us tremendous confidence, given the fact that the market is significant, over $100 billion just three years away. Um, and for us to grab a disproportionate share of that market, and that's what our investors, uh, our partners, our customers, and our employees are excited about, and we're confident in it. Speaking of the market, we're heading into what could be a very long and protracted economic slowdown. How are you preparing for that? So we've got uh, you know, very supportive uh, investor base and customers. Uh, we're seeing broad adoption, Emily, across the enterprise space. Our customers are getting ready to, to move from pilots and uh, early proof of concept deployments that they've been doing with Magic Leap One uh, and doing much broader deployments across the enterprise and across much more uh, broad set of use cases with Magic Leap Two. Um, and, and we're proud of uh, the investor base that we've built. Uh, they're incredibly supportive long-term investors um, that uh, believe in the market opportunity, that believe in our IP portfolio, they believe in our technology, technology leadership, um, and uh, we're all aligned about uh, us magically grabbing a disproportionate share of that market. Um, well, how much is the success of the next generation product dependent on 5G and people's ability to access it? So, you know, as we, as we head towards uh, kind of our next two generations of product, we do believe uh, that 5G will be an incredible accelerant uh, for the use cases uh, around spatial computing. Spatial computing, we believe, and our carrier customers believe, is a killer use case for the 5G networks. And you know, while in in-building scenarios, uh, you know, Wi-Fi coverage and gigabit Ethernet uh, drive uh, you know adoption of these use cases in the enterprise market, we do see as those um, as those use cases start to head outside of the enterprise market uh, into uh, where we live, uh, where we work on a daily basis, and as we commute to all the places in between, 5G will be a huge enabler. Uh, of, of these use cases and really drive broader consumer adoption over time.